Elon Musk will step down as CEO of Twitter. Title 42 is temporarily extended, and the January 6th committee recommends criminal charges for Donald Trump. That and more on this week's headlines. Uncovered. I'm Chris Chappell. Louisiana and West Virginia banned state officials from downloading TikTok on devices used for government purposes. This is over fear that China could use it to steal data or spy on the U.S. government. Within the past two weeks, 19 states have at least partially banned TikTok on government devices. And a proposal to ban all federal employees from using TikTok on government devices will be included in the federal funding bill. This was after the Senate unanimously approved this measure. Wait, unanimously? The Senate doesn't agree on anything unanimously. Even if there was a bill that asked if this adorable good boy deserves a treat, which he absolutely does, you just know some Democrats would object saying we should ask the dog its preferred pronouns, and some Republicans would object saying he's just asking for a handout. Elon Musk has been voted off of Twitter. At least that's the results of a poll Musk conducted where he asked if he should step down as the head of Twitter. He said he would abide by the results and announced he would step down as CEO once he found a replacement. But the question is, who will replace Musk? Some people already decided to take their shot, including Tom from MySpace, because who doesn't love and remember their first friend? And Snoop Dogg. One positive of Snoop Dogg running Twitter is it would mean longer tweets, since I bet his first act would be to increase the character limit from 280 to 420. Last week, Musk banned several high-profile journalists, which included writers for The New York Times, CNN, and The Washington Post, without warning. These journalists had all been critical of him. Barry Weiss, one of the journalists Musk handpicked to reveal the Twitter files, criticized him for banning these people, saying, the old regime at Twitter governed by its own whims and biases, and it sure looks like the new regime has the same problem. I oppose it in both cases, and I think those journalists who are reporting on a story of public importance should be reinstated. Musk responded, saying, rather than rigorously pursuing truth, Weiss was virtue signaling to show that she was good in the eyes of media elite to keep one foot in both worlds. Musk claimed he was being doxxed. These journalists violated a new Twitter policy, and a stalker followed a car his young son was in, thinking it was him. This all stemmed from the account Elon Jet, which was banned for tracking Elon Musk's private jet. Musk blamed Elon Jet for the stalker following his son. However, authorities said they don't see a link between the stalker and the Elon Jet Twitter account, since the confrontation took place 26 miles from the airport where Musk's jet was last reported. Also, the stalker may not have even been a stalker. The person claims they had just pulled into a gas station to make a call, and Elon's son's security team confronted him and accused him of following them. Police are investigating the security team for criminal actions. Musk abruptly changed Twitter policy, seemingly to justify Elon Jet's suspension, saying sharing someone else's live location will not be allowed as it is doxing. Although many don't consider reporting his jet's whereabouts doxing since it's public data. Although it's also not exactly public data either, because Musk is enrolled in an FAA service that lets him have an anonymized identification code for his aircraft. So the person running Elon Jet wasn't just using easily available public data. He was also using other clues to figure out which anonymized ID code belonged to Elon, like tracking his particular type of plane out of the airport he flies from often. That ID code can also only be changed every 60 days. So once Elon Jet figured out which ID code belongs to Elon's Jet, then it's just as easily trackable again. So those reporters who were banned from Twitter, yeah, remember them? That's how this whole thing got started. They were banned for linking to Elon Jet on other social media sites, which would violate Twitter's new doxing rule. Which, in this topsy-turvy, up-is-down world, now means that mainstream media are blasting Musk for censoring the press. Hey, censorship is only okay when the press is doing it themselves. But I'm not sure the public data defense that the media are using really holds up here. After all, if you own your own home, technically your address is public information. 
but anyone posting a reporter's home address on Twitter would be pretty clearly doxing them. Not to mention, what you like on TikTok is also public data, but you wouldn't want an entire Twitter account devoted to broadcasting yours, would you? Good luck finding work when everyone knows you like those lewd Billy Eilish deepfakes. Man, TikTok really should be banned. Musk wound up reinstating the banned journalists after, you guessed it, holding a Twitter poll. I feel like he can't even pick a movie to watch on Netflix without making a Twitter poll first. Although I can't blame him. Every time I log into Netflix, I get overwhelmed by choice and FOMO, end up scrolling through titles for 20 minutes, then switch it off and watch random YouTube videos for four hours. Yep, Netflix is totally worth that $10 a month. Musk apologized for the policy change and said it won't happen again without a vote. Which, of course, would come after his what should I have for breakfast poll, and the should I use the bathroom before, after, or during showering poll. More after the break. Welcome back. Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts temporarily halted the termination of Title 42. That's a policy Trump put in place during COVID that allows the U.S. to quickly expel immigrants who illegally cross the southern border. Title 42 was set to expire this past Wednesday. However, 19 states requested an extension of the policy, and it was granted an emergency stay pending further notice. Chief Justice Roberts asked the government to respond by Tuesday, hours before the original deadline. The Biden administration requested the Supreme Court let Title 42 end, but to wait until at least after Christmas. Probably to allow them to remove the most notorious illegal border crosser of all, Santa Claus. A $1.7 trillion federal spending bill was held up by Utah Senator Mike Lee, who wanted to add an amendment to cut spending to Homeland Security unless Title 42 was extended. But this was resolved when Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Sinema added another amendment that would increase border funding and extend Title 42. The Senate voted on the $1.7 trillion omnibus spending bill on Thursday. Although instead of omnibus, I think it should be called Schrodinger's bill because it's bipartisan, so it somehow simultaneously makes everyone happy and no one happy. As of this recording, the House hasn't voted on it yet, but I am confident that it will have been approved by the time you watch this. Because one thing Congress will never do is let the government run out of money. The federal judge who ordered the end of Title 42 last month called it arbitrary and capricious. However, Texas Governor Greg Abbott warned there would be total chaos if Title 42 were lifted. And it isn't just Republicans offering warnings. New York City Mayor Eric Adams said, Our shelter system is full and we are nearly out of money, staff, and space. Truth be told, if corrective measures are not taken soon, we may very well be forced to cut or curtail programs New Yorkers rely on. Programs New Yorkers rely on? Oh no, does this mean they might cut back on filthy subway trains that never arrive on time, if they even bother running at all? Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich said, getting rid of Title 42 will recklessly and needlessly endanger more Americans and migrants by exacerbating the catastrophe that is occurring at our southern border. Unlawful crossings are estimated to surge from 7,000 per day to as many as 18,000. So, how did the White House respond? Uh, but again, we are doing the work. The president has been doing the work at the border since day one. Doing the work? Considering more than 5 million immigrants illegally entered the U.S. since Biden took office, that's not the confidence booster she thinks it is. That's like an architect bragging, yeah, the bridge collapsed, but I did the work on it. Let's move on to something a little less depressing. Sick children. Several stores nationwide are facing a shortage of children's medicine. This is due to an earlier start to the cold and flu season and more children getting sick than usual. Johnson & Johnson and other drug makers claim they're producing the same amount of medicine as usual, but buyers are hoarding medicine. And this is similar to how toilet paper was hard to find at the beginning of the COVID pandemic. Man, remember the good old days when the Christmas gift parents had a hard time finding for their kids was Tickle Me Elmo and not amoxicillin? And for those of you accusing me of looking at the past with rose-tinted glasses, are the glasses making everything rose-tinted, or is it the pink eye you picked up from your sick kid? But don't worry, this shortage isn't expected to last as long as the baby formula shortage a few months ago. So while kids will be uncomfortable, they, for the most part, won't be in any actual danger. They're actually much more likely to die from homicide, as a recent study showed that as a leading cause of death in children under 17. There, doesn't that make you worry less? 
And why haven't they made an anti-homicide pill? Glad you asked me. They have. My very own supplement, CHAP XL. It's guaranteed to make you impervious to knife and bullet wounds, since it turns your innards to stone. Okay, technically it just gives you kidney stones, but that's close enough, right? No refunds. And after the break, the FBI paid Twitter to suppress free speech. Welcome back. The Twitter files part seven and eight have dropped. At this point, the Twitter files is gonna wind up with more sequels than the land before time. They made 14 with the 15th on the way, in case you're wondering. I don't think the actual dinosaurs lasted as long as this franchise. Anyways, these latest Twitter files reveal the FBI paid Twitter $3.4 million since October 2019. This was reimbursement for using Twitter staff to process requests from the FBI. These requests included looking for evidence of foreign influence, investigating users over terms of use violations, and internal data on users that Twitter refused to hand over due to privacy concerns. The FBI requested so much of Twitter that employees referred to completing a portion of it as a monumental undertaking. This likely also includes the FBI's work with the Department of Justice using Twitter to discredit the Hunter Biden story. I've talked about this many times, and I made Matt watch the videos from the laptop even more times. No, no, you can't make me, you can't make me. <laughs> So essentially, it appears the FBI used taxpayer money to spy on and suppress taxpayers. That's outrageous. Mainly because if someone wanted to spend money for some shady establishment to shut them up for being naughty, it shouldn't be the FBI. It should be this woman. Stay in your lane, feds. Speaking of people who have been silenced, Donald Trump. The January 6th panel recommended the Department of Justice bring criminal charges against Trump for his role in the January 6th Capitol riot. The committee released a 154-page summary detailing their findings. Wait, 154 pages is just the summary? Does that mean there's a 1,500-page extended Snyder cut of this out there? The charges the committee recommends are obstruction of an official proceeding, conspiracy to defraud the United States, conspiracy to make a false statement, and incite, assist, or aid, or comfort an insurrection. Now, the January 6th committee's recommendations aren't legally binding. It's ultimately up to the Justice Department to decide if they'll pursue these charges against Trump or any of his allies, despite the criminal referral. Maybe, like Elon Musk, they'll hold a Twitter poll. I don't know if Trump will be charged for this, but I know what he should be prosecuted for. Selling these NFT digital trading cards for $99 each. No one would actually buy those. What's that, Shelley? Okay, apparently a lot of people actually bought them. They sold out almost immediately, raising $5 million. And the price of the NFTs has risen to more than double their original mint value. This is despite several people doubting Trump, saying he timed the market wrong, and that it was a disastrous start to his presidential campaign. These cards are now harder to get than children's medicine. Every time you think this 76-year-old is done, he keeps finding ways of coming back. I haven't seen someone avoid extinction for this long since the land before time. So what do you think about the stories we covered this week? Leave your comments below. And if you want to help us deliver nonpartisan news, be sure to support America Uncovered by going to patreon.com slash America Uncovered. All it takes is as little as a dollar or more per episode to fight YouTube censorship and demonetization. We rely on your support to help us keep making great episodes. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching America Uncovered.